pressure is piling on the government to take urgent action to save households from a crippling rise in the cost of living. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, is facing calls to cut taxes to stop millions of people from potentially plunging into fuel poverty. The Health Secretary and former Chancellor, Sajid Javid, joins us now. Good morning, Secretary of State. Um, you're here today, first of all, to talk about the JAB programme. So let's uh, ask you quickly about that. What's happening today? Well, our vaccination program has saved countless lives. It's our wall of protection against this uh, virus and it's helping us to live with COVID. And what we're announcing today is that I've accepted the advice of the JCVI, that's our group of independent advisors on vaccinations, to offer a spring booster dose uh, to those that are aged 75 or over or residents uh, of elderly people's care homes or those that are most vulnerable, the immunosuppressed. Uh, the NHS will invite this uh, group of people, it's about 5 million people in total, uh, to come forward uh, for vaccination when it's their time and I hope people uh, take it up because it's the vaccines that are helping uh, in, in such a phenomenal way helping us uh, to live with COVID. May I ask you a question? If you sure. had COVID would you go to the office? If I, if I knew I had COVID I wouldn't go to the office. Because you're taking away the £500 payment for people on low incomes and you're also taking away statutory sick pay for people self-isolating due to COVID. Do you not think whatever the guidance says, if you take the finances away, that's effectively saying to people, well, you've got to go to work, go to work? Well, look, we had sick pay in place long before uh, we had COVID and, and we are learning as a country to live with COVID as we live with other infectious diseases like flu or, or others. And, and now because we got the vaccines, the impact of COVID in terms of keeping people out of hospital and saving their lives is, 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 is a lot less than when we first discovered it. So when it comes to uh, someone maybe having to take time off work or, or socialising less because they believe they might be positive, that is handled in the same way all other infectious diseases are handled. There is statutory sick pay. A lot of companies, I think the vast majority of companies pay a lot more than statutory sick pay. And I think this is the right balanced approach. So those people who don't get uh, anything more from their companies or those who are on very low incomes, what would you say to them? If they get COVID and they're struggling, we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis, should they go to work or not? You're saying they should take it on the chin and suck it up, are you? And stay at home, but suck up the cost. Well, I mean, th those are your words, not mine. Uh, what I'm saying what is your that... your words? What should I... people do? I'm sorry, Ash, well... you're, you're quite right. Then what are yeah. your words? What direct advice would you give to those people who are struggling due to the cost of living and you're not funding them, but they have COVID? So uh, should they stay at home or should they go to work? What, what I'm saying is a decision for of your, your personal responsibility. You make the decision that you think is is best given your circumstances. And so we have set out... Or actually giving them an answer. Out. You're not giving them guidance. If they go to work, it's absolutely fine. If they go to work and they have COVID and they infect people, if they're on a low income, that's their choice. Well, we are. There, there's guidance uh, in place at the moment, not regulation, from no April the 1st to fund onwards. Them. It's the finances, not the guidance. There's no finances in place. For, for, so I'm just April... trying to... You're the, you're the Secretary of State for Health. What should people do? It's not personal responsibility. It's an infectious disease. Can we have some clarity from you one way or the it's other? A, it is... I'm, I'm afraid I, 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 I would say again, it is personal responsibility. What should people do if they have flu? What should people do if they have some other kind of infectious disease? They should make a, a determination, use common sense and personal responsibility to decide what is the next best step forward. As we live with COVID, uh, as I say, the, it's the vaccines that have made all the difference. We have this huge wall of defence that is keeping people out of hospital. That is why we can open up society and start living again and going back to work and doing socialising or whatever we were doing before uh, COVID. But we cannot have a situation where the government constantly keeps providing universal free testing that will cost them £2 billion extra a month, particularly uh, if uh, other things are rightly demanded of government to help people with cost of living. I, I, I appreciate that. So, effectively, we are, we're, we're putting COVID into the same category as the other infectious diseases from this That's point right. on, which is living with COVID. Uh, can, I right. can I move on on the cost of living crisis? Are you concerned about the physical and mental health, physical health and mental health impacts of people in the UK from the amount of rising bills? I, I, I can tell you from my email bag, which is enormous, it's full of many desperate people 
who are struggling to maintain their physical health with the cost of living rise, which hasn't really started yet. It, it, it explodes on the 1st of April when energy prices have that huge hike and also dealing with the mental health cost of worrying how they're going to make ends meet. Uh, what, do you, what do you say from a health perspective about this? What should we be doing? Look, I, I am concerned about the, the rise in cost of living. Of, of course I am. I think the whole of government is, and that's why it's important, whether it's for mental health reasons or otherwise, just basically uh, earning a living and uh, being able to provide for your family. It's hugely important that we do what we can. I think that what's happened already in terms of government support, whether that's the increase in the national living wage, which I think has gone to the highest level uh, ever, uh, the support more generally for the economy so more people can be in employment uh, than otherwise. It was good to see last week, uh, for instance, that unemployment was back down to, as a rate, the, the pre-COVID uh, level. And also, of course, the support so far for uh, energy bills. I mean, all of this uh, is working together to help people, you'll provide uh, some level of support whilst they deal with the cost of living. The, um, on energy bills, we're expecting to see year on year by October a £1,300 rise in a typical bill. Uh, the, the government help is £150 in April and then £200, although that's a loan, not loan system that comes in October. So that's 350 of £1,300. Um, I, I just want to read to you a couple of tweets that we've had in because I have... Uh, as, as a former Chancellor and the Secretary of State for Health, I have great concerns about some people with disabilities and medical conditions in this country who have increased electricity costs. So, Cosy on Twitter, my husband is on oxygen 24-7 and a ventilator at night. Without the price increases, we are already using around £180 a month for gas and electric. So that'll go up to 270 in April as a rough average and £360 in October. We don't have the heating on and sit with blankets on us. We lost his income of over £20,000 a year when he had to stop work. Mm. Clearly desperate. And another, Lisa on Twitter, I am disabled for 23 years and a single parent. My PIP, personal independence payment, has increased £3 a month, but council tax increased £5 a month, and my electricity is predicted to go up £70, from £76 a month to £143. I'm petrified as I don't have another £70 a month. I don't drink, I don't have Sky. Shocking. What help is there for people with medical conditions and disability for a likely year-on-year -year doubling in energy bills? Well, for, for those people... Uh, that are on disability benefit or, or on PIP or some other kind of uh, support, those payments are regularly kept under review. They do often rise when we see rising inflation. I don't want to preempt uh, wh where they might go to in the future. That's clearly got to be a, a government-wide decision. But it is important that they are still there and available for people at the right level so that it can give them support that they are uh, intended to do so. I mean, more broadly, of course, those people, whether you're disabled or not, they're there are other levels of support. You've mentioned uh, the, the energy price intervention that the Chancellor announced a, a few weeks ago. Uh, and I've noted what you said about the levels of support, but that is a total package, I think, of around £9 billion, maybe a bit more. That's a huge amount of support. And then lastly, I would say is that it's right to keep all of this uh, under review to see what more uh, can be done, but especially to target it at exactly the kind of people that you're talking about today that are, that are much more vulnerable. If you forgive me taking off my presenter's hat for a second and putting on my, my campaigner's hat. Secretary of State, people on oxygen concentrators, people on dialysis machine, people with electric wheelchairs are in panic and shock that their lives are going to be cut off because of these energy rises. I know we have cabinet government. I know you sit around that table. Mm -hmm. Please, as Secretary of State for Health, will you champion those people and make sure that we don't disable their lives going forward with what's about to happen in April. It's and, not a question. And, you don't have to answer or give me a comment. Um, actually, here. I want to, I want to yeah. answer very straightforward. Yes, absolutely. Those are some of the most important people in our society and that is exactly the kind of people that we should do everything we can to support, including from my department and the NHS. Thank you. And forgive me for, for if I just broke the rules there. Um, Sajid Javid, uh, we appreciate your time uh, this morning. Thanks very much. Indeed. Thank you for having me.